Hey, it's Dr. Claw here to walk you through your critical reading assignments. So uh, you'll complete a variety of these over the course. And basically the goal of these assignments are to help you start diving into what you're reading and thinking more critically about what you're reading. And while I could spend a lot of time defining critical thinking and critical reading for you, basically what I want you to keep in mind is that you're going to be questioning what you read. Um, you're going to be looking at it um, and not taking everything at face value. Now this is a skill that you will need to work at to develop and I've got some questions embedded in each critical reading assignment to help you do that. So um, I'm going to walk you through, for instance, the critical reading assignment for the travels of Sir John Mandeville. So I'm going to click on this. In your canvas that will be in the upcoming assignments section. Um, you can also find it in modules. Okay, so what you're going to do is for every reading, create three critical comments. Okay, so that means that basically you're going to create three items for each reading um, when you complete a critical reading. All right, luckily I have provided some questions for you that will help you think critically about the text or you can create your own question. And, and I don't want you to think that this is like, not allowed or something. Rather, I've provided questions because I know it can be hard to come up with your own questions, particularly at the beginning of the term. Um, but if you're ready to start writing your own questions and answering them, that's great. Um, if you right now want to use the questions I've written and then later on decide you want to write your own, that's totally fine too. So uh, just keep in mind, you always have the option to write your own question. Regardless of whether you're using my questions or your questions, please Please include the question that you're answering along with each comment. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to scroll down to the questions um, that are listed here in bullet points. And let's say you want to know, um, you want to look at how the author is communicating in this text. So maybe you found it particularly clear or maybe you found it particularly difficult to understand and that's something you want to think critically about. So you will evaluate the style of communication. Does the author communicate effectively? That's sort of what drew you to this question, right? Because you had a reaction, either the author really did or really didn't. And so then the next step, that critical thinking step is what makes that communication effective or ineffective? So your comment in answering this question We'll try to tackle that. What What is the author doing that's making it easy or hard to understand the text that you're reading? Um, so if you're answering this question, the easiest thing to do is just copy it and paste it into your Word document and then type your answer right after it. Then when you're ready to answer your next question, put a space there and, and move on to the next question. Let's say maybe you want to answer this question about conflicts and complications. So this is something I'm going to draw your attention to a lot in this class, which is that texts aren't always consistent with the information they're giving us. And uh, sometimes they might contradict themselves or they might present conflicting information. And a lot of times as readers, we just kind of gloss over it and we tend to be like, oh, I, Kristen, just must be misunderstanding something rather than saying, well, maybe the text has this conflict there for a reason, or maybe that, that conflict or that contradiction communicates something to me as a reader. And it's not actually a problem um, with me as a reader, but rather this is something I can investigate in the text. So I often find this is one of the most exciting ways into a text is uh, latching on to something that doesn't make sense to you. Uh, maybe that because there's a conflict or a contradiction and trying to understand what you can learn from that conflict or contradiction. So let's say you want to answer this question in your critical reading uh, assignment. Um, where is the conflict? Where's the contradiction or the complication? What is that? Make sure you tell your reader what it is that you're looking at, what, what jumped out at you that seemed contradictory. Um, next, what are your initial reactions to the conflict or the contradiction or whatever it is? 
And then what what does that contradiction make you expect from the text? Maybe it maybe it means that you no longer trust a character that you thought was trustworthy or maybe you feel like you're running into an unreliable narrator, which is um a phenomenon that happens when you realize that the narrator might not be telling you the truth. Um, so what what is happening because you noticed this contradiction? How does it impact the way that you are reading the text from here on out? So your answer to that would go directly after the question. Again, you would copy the question into your Word document and then type your answer out. And then you could choose a third one, um, or maybe you want to write your own question at this point. So that's the content of a critical reading assignment. You'll have your name, uh, the text that you're analyzing. So here, make sure that you explain that you are writing about the travels of Sir John Mandeville, chapters 4 and 22. Um, and then you'll have your three questions with your three responses to those questions. Please do write in complete sentences. And I ask that you proofread it carefully. Um, it's always good to review what you're submitting and make sure that it's um, well proofread and polished. And keep in mind that these responses are an area in which you can practice explaining your thought process. So they're not as formal as uh, one of our arguments that we'll write in class, but they are an excellent way for you to start thinking through your logic and thinking through how you are thinking about the text and um, how you understand the text as you read it. Please use headings as needed to distinguish between each question and comment. And then why do we do that? Why are we even doing these assignments? Well, the critical reading assignments can help you move beyond surface reading, which is where you're kind of reading quickly to get an idea of what the text is about, and start jumping into critical reading. Now, this is not to say that surface reading is bad. I usually recommend doing that once to get an overview of what the text is about um, so that you have a grasp of the general plot, and then going back and rereading to start conducting critical reading, where you pause at parts of the text you don't understand and look at them more closely, where you ask questions, just like this assignment is asking you to do. Um, and where maybe you make notes next to uh, the sections you're reading or draw connections between what you're reading and other things that you've read or seen or talked about. Um, so as you complete these critical readings, you will develop your skills at explaining your logic, at questioning the text, and just at reading critically. So keeping in mind the idea that you can question the text and that there are uh, lots of questions that you can turn to any text as you begin to read it. So um, the more of these critical reading assignments you complete, the stronger these skills will get and the easier you'll find it to read the text in our class. As always, if you have any questions about the assignment, please feel free to reach out to me on Yellowdig and tag me with the at symbol or if you have a more private question, you're welcome to email me directly. Thanks for listening.